In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. You all heard, uh, I'm just going to be very quick today and leave you to reflect on your own. You heard about how the Vatican gave a blessing to the priest to bless him six couples, not marriages. They made the reservation, of course, clear. But in the Orthodox Church, we didn't feel good about this. Even though they didn't say marriage, no notion of marriage was mentioned. Our Metropolitan Ambassador gave a comment on this. I sent it to you, to all the groups in the church. It's good, it's benefiting, you can listen to it. We're waiting to see if our church, as Orthodox Church, will request any clarification from the Vatican on this. But I want you to pray, because we have many, we know many devout Catholics that are now doubting, uncomfortable. We pray for them. And we pray for the, our, our Catholic Church, the sister church. It's a sister church to us. And we know that St. Mary will do something about this. Because St. Mary loves her children everywhere. So I'm hoping in my wild dreams that the Virgin Mary goes to the Pope and tells him this is not okay. I wanted to be wide-armed to everyone. My son wanted to be wide-armed to everyone, but be careful. There's a slippery slope between accepting and condoning. Very hazy line. Anyone, any shepherd, <clears throat> not shepherd, any father, any mother, could fall into that line between accepting, welcoming, loving, and condoning wrong. Very faint line. I pray that the Virgin Mary takes care of that. Because, because the Virgin Mary is the mother of all the Catholics and the Orthodox. Protestants are a little distant from her. She once even said that. She once appeared to a, a, a woman that she loved, and she said, there are bad things happening in the world. I want you to pray. I urge all the Catholics in the world to pray for God to fix these wrong things and to take his wrath. I urge Orthodox to pray with me too. Catholics pray with me, Orthodox pray with me. And she said something very nice. She said, I urge Protestants to pray with me too, even though I know their feelings towards me are lukewarm. Very amazing. I think this is very relevant. She's their mother, but their feelings towards her are lukewarm. So I pray that the Virgin Mary takes care of that very quickly. <clears throat> and then we go to the Gospel today in three small points to save time for everything. The first point relates to doctrine. The, two, the other two relate to spirituality. Okay? What relates to doctrine in this gospel? That's a challenge for you. Where is, there's no doctrine. There's praise, thanks, thank. Where do you find doctrine in this gospel? Mm -hmm. Where is the doctrine? She did my God. She said, my Lord. But that's a good one, too. The doctrine is in John the Baptist leaping for joy. This is an unborn child, about six months' age in the, in the womb. Elizabeth, when she was filled by the Holy Spirit, because someone could say, well, Elizabeth was just emotional. No. The Bible before that says Elizabeth was filled by the Holy Spirit and said, Behold, when the greeting of your, the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped for joy in my womb. 
The babe is alive. He has feelings. He's spiritually joyful. The unborn are humans. Probably this is one of the unique evidences from the Bible about why the church refuses abortion and don't consider, doesn't consider the choice. <clears throat> I heard recently, which is not true, which is not confirmed, that one of the magicians, the great magician in the world, converted to Christ, and in his massive magic and sorcery experience, knew from the devil that the blood of the baby that are being aborted gives the, de the, de the demons more sovereignty in the, in the land, like more room in the land. The, the, more those, the, the, the more these souls are lost through abortion, the more Satan gets more control over the land. Could be right, could be wrong. That's a testimony of repentance. But uh, could be right, could be wrong. But this is a good biblical evidence that the, the Bible and the Holy Spirit consider the unborn as living. Number two, the praise of St. Mary is full of humility, right? That's the core of it. And humility is something great in the sight of God. And humility in simple is really to feel that you are low. To feel that you are low is humility. But here's the catch. If you're feeling that you are low and still you are happy, that's true humility. Saints feel they are low. But they're not angry because of that feeling. Does that make sense to you? They're happy. They're low, but they're happy. The, the Virgin Mary said he regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. The lowly state. So the combination is simple. If you feel you're low, then you are humble. But make sure you're happy. If you feel you're low and you're angry, that's pride, actually. That's what we call sigar in nafs. That faint heart, uh, the big sin, sigar in nafs, khatiyah. Because the person feels low, but they're not happy. They're angry, which is an upside, in, out, whatever, I don't know the term, like inside out pride. Inside out pride. Humility is to feel like I'm the lowest person in the church. I am. But I'm very happy. Because God loves me and he takes care of me. And I'm very happy that all of you are better than I. Does that make sense to you? I am the lowest. And I'm very happy that every single one in the church is, is better than me spiritually, better than me in their value, and I am the least. If I'm happy with this, that's the true humility. And the Holy Spirit of God feeds so much into the spirit of a person like this. You know, let me tell you. When the Spirit of God finds a person like this, he says, come, let me fill this person. They're empty and they're ready to receive the grace of God. I want to fill this person. So this phrase, read it again, it's just full of humble spirit that the Virgin Mary has. And that what made her above everyone, how God sees her humility. Think you're low and be happy, you're good. Third point, the Virgin Mary teaches us how to relate to praise. How to relate to praise. Elizabeth praised St. Mary, right? She said, you're the mother of my Lord, how will you come to me, right? I will tell you a secret. From St. Mary, the best way to relate to praise is not to negate that or to say, no, I'm not, I'm not good, I didn't do anything, I didn't wash the dishes, they washed themselves. Negating is not what humility is. St. Mary teaches us to relate to praise in a very beautiful way. 
give praise to God. That's the best way. If someone tells you, you're a great kid. I'm very proud of you. You're awesome. Look at you. Don't say, no, I'm not great. I'm the worst, worst person in the church. Don't say that. Just in a very wise way, bring glory to God. Deflect, direct the real praise to God. St. Mary, when Elizabeth said, you are a mother of God, how come you And then she's, after giving God praise to looking at her humble spirit, and she started praising God. She started talking about God. Not about how bad she is or how lowly she is, right? She started saying, <clears throat> look what our, our God does. Holy is his name. She's not talking about herself anymore. Holy is his name. And his mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. Talk about God, right? He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he sent out empty. He had helped his servant Israel in the remembrance to his mercy. The best way to deal with, with praise, when you, which we all receive praise, right? We compliment each other. Your voice is good. Your hair is good. Your clothes is good. Your leadership is good. We get praise. Immediately, don't let that get into your heart. Because the problem usually is not how we answer the problem is that really the words of praise get into our heart. Does that make sense? Yeah, they come inside. And when they come inside, we like them probably most of the time. And after we like them, we send of a humble response to say. And we say, no, I'm nothing. Walhaga. No. Give glory to God. Because everything we have is from God. Even the ability to walk, the ability to speak, the ability to sing, the ability to preach, the ability to do anything is from God. So God is always worthy of the glory. So from the Virgin Mary, we learn that we should always give praise to God. And that's the humblest thing you can do when someone gives you a word of praise. To his name is the glory forever. Amen.